So being able to prime your surfaces for your artwork is a very basic and beneficial skill to have. So I'm going to show you how to prime your substrates as well as talk about the importance of having your surface primed. So why is it important to have your surface primed? Well, it's very important to have the surface that you're going to be creating your artwork on which is whether you're painting acrylic, oil painting, so that there is a surface that will grab on, grab on and adhere to your medium. And it also helps the longevity of your painting, of your artwork, so that over time it'll last longer and adhere to your surface much longer. So um, just to give you an example, so a substrate is considered the surface or the material, the surface and the material that you're actually creating your artwork on. So for example, this is canvas and uh, this would be considered a canvas substrate and this would be considered a, a wood substrate. And I just wanted to show you because canvas is the most commonly used substrate. If you were to pick one of these up in an art store um, and you were to take it out of the, the package and turn it around, you'll notice that this is, it, behind you'll see the actual raw canvas. And this is what the canvas actually looks like before the manufacturer primes it. So in the factory they actually gesso this canvas. Not only do they stretch it um, around the frame, but they also gesso it. And you can tell because this, this part of the canvas is white versus this sort of cream color. Now, this, now the importance of having your surface primed is, for example, if you were to paint directly on this raw canvas, the paint would soak in through the fibers. It really wouldn't um, adhere <clears throat> to the canvas as well as if it were to be primed. So that's why it's important to prime your surface. Same thing with wood. If you were to paint on your wood panel, over time your artwork would either crack or peel and eventually separate from the surface and then the artwork just wouldn't last for a long time. So that's why it's very important. Um, so another type of substrate that I wanted to show you as well is actual wood. So this is a, uh, similar to your canvas, to a canvas, this also has a frame that the top panel is adhered to. And this frame actually works as a stabilizer so that the panel doesn't warp over time. One of the things that happens is that over, you know, uh, changes in temperature, moisture, um, whether it's dry or moist or whatever, over the years, if you don't have a frame around this, the wood can actually warp. And I've seen this happen, and I've seen actually artists, um, it's just heartbreaking to see their artwork uh, start to buckle. So this is considered a wood cradle because this is considered a cradle. Now there's also the other substrate is um, MDF and this is what I commonly use in my art classes and what also what I um, use in my courses is an MDF art panel. And MDF is a medium density fiber board which is made out of a composite of wood fibers and a binder. It also is manufactured to, let, to be considered archival. And what is archival? Archival is materials that are used will last, supposedly last, a hundred years. So if you were to buy MDF at a at Home Depot or a hardware store, the MDF probably is not, most likely not archival, and you'll also notice that it's a softer MDF, and if you, if you put water on it, it'll warp very easily. 
this is considered an art panel MDF. So when you're ordering these panels, make sure that you order them from an art source. So Aaron Brothers has this. They have them in a three pack. You can also find them online. There's a company called um, Alt, um, Art Alternatives and they have these panels in different sizes. Another form of art panel is one that's very thick. So this one is about a quarter of an inch thick and this one is considered an eighth of an inch thick. This is also commonly found because this is pre-gessoed and pre-primed. This is what it would look like before and then, then they, the manufacturer would prime these. Now often I have these because um, if they're not primed they are uh, less expensive. So that's why it's really good to have the skill of knowing how to prime your own surface. So, so what I'm going to do is show you how to gesso your board. And um, gesso is really a uh, mixture of glue binder, chalk, and a oh, titanium white. So the most common gesso is white, but it also comes in clear and black. This particular brand, I, I just like using this brand because it's a lot more fluid when I apply it to the board. Other gessos tend to be a little bit stickier and thicker and harder to work with, so I recommend uh, the basics. Now Liquitex has a higher end gesso, but this is perfectly fine. So what you're going to need is, um, oh another thing too is with white gesso you can actually add a color, acrylic color to it and, and have a tone to your primer. So if you wanted to, it's almost like skipping a step, instead of having a white surface and adding paint to it for your background color, you're actually adding the tone into the gesso so it's, it's painting the background and priming the, the surface at the same time. This is something that I cover in my image transfer course. Um, so if you're interested in learning how to paint with gesso to, pr to prime your surface as well as tone at the same time, you can check out my image transfer course. So what you're also going to need is you're going to need like a scrap of wood for your wood block. This is for your sanding. You're also going to need like a 180 grit sandpaper. And what I do is I just get, I cut out a little square of this sandpaper and I just wrap it around the block for sanding. And I'll show you how to do that um, after we apply the gesso. If you don't have a, a scrap of wood block, um, you can also purchase these at a, at a hardware store. These are already come in a block form and it's, it's actually a sand paper surface adhered to um, a foam. And again, this is 180 grit uh, sandpaper and these are just really easy to use. So you can also use that for sanding. I also use um, a sponge brush and a sponge brush leaves less strokes. That's one of the reasons why I use sponge brushes for gessoing because it, it doesn't leave a lot of streaks. So if you were to use an, another uh, a bristle brush, that would actually start leaving more streaks. So one of the reasons why I use a sponge brush is it most likely leaves less streaks. So what you're going to do is you're going to do two coats and you can do a third coat if you want, if you want something a little bit more substantial, but I find two coats is perfectly fine um, for priming your surface. Your first coat will be vertical strokes. Then we're going to let that dry completely and then sand it and then after that we're going to apply the second coat horizontally. So, and then we'll let that dry and sand it. So what you want to do is I will apply like probably a kind of a close to a tablespoon but not quite of gesso in the center of the board. 
and then I try to spread that out throughout the board. Now the first coat is going to be somewhat thin. You're going to still see some of the board through the gesso. And what I recommend is start from the center and then, and then brush it towards the edge. And the reason why I do this is because it avoids accumulation of gesso on the edge of your board. If you were to do this, every time you hit that corner, it's going to accumulate some extra gesso on the edge of the board. And once that's dried, it's just very difficult to get off. I have to scrape that gesso, extra gesso off. So I just start from the center and then I, put, I drag it to the edge. So that's just a really good technique to have a cl clean application of your gesso. So once that's done, make sure you put your brush in water right away because, there's some, because of the binding agent in gesso, um, it'll dry and be very difficult to clean that brush. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a dryer and dry this completely. So that's pretty dry. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just lightly sand the first coat. And you will notice that there's a sort of a chalky feel, kind of a gritty feel to it. So we're just going to sand that very lightly. You're not putting a whole lot of pressure on it. And I usually sand in a circular motion just until it's smooth. Now the reason why I do it in a circular motion is if I'm doing this, I'm going to start creating these streaks, these sort of scratches in my surface. I don't want that. I want to get it smooth. And then what I'm going to do is now I'm going to add the second coat. And we're going to go the opposite direction. Right, so the first coat we went vertical, and now the second coat I'm going to go a little heavier on the gesso. And I'm going to go now horizontal. Again, I'm going to go from the center out to the edge. And you can see I ha still have, I can still see parts of the wood, the raw wood under there, so I'm going to make sure that's completely covered. And you notice I'm not really globbing this stuff on because it, not only will it take it longer to dry, but it'll get more streaky if you put too much gesso on there. And a lot of the times I find, you know, just two coats is good enough, is sufficient. Okay, so now I'll go, I'm going to go ahead and dry that. So how do you know when it's dry? Well, when you put your hand to touch it, it doesn't feel cool or moist, that it feels pretty dry. And again, you're going to feel a little bit of a grit, so now you want to sand it again. Circular motion. And you'll feel that grit go away. So that's how you prime your surface. So I just want to show you the difference now. 
This is the raw panel, and now this is gesso. So, you know, before you start working, it, it might be also a good idea to do a few of these so that you have a few boards ready and available, already primed. So now you're ready to start creating your artwork on the surface. For more information on my other online courses, workshops, and retreats, visit truecreativitywithin.com.